Refinitiv have in fourth quarter earnings to fall 9.8%, revenues to fall 1.3%. That would give us an overall decline for 2020 earnings of a little over 15%. If the numbers come in better than that, how do you think the market will react? Morning, Jeff. It's great to be here. And your point about earnings season, I think, is very, very important because markets have moved a significant amount over the past quarter or so. They've moved pretty significantly even this year. And earnings are really where we're going to see the rubber meet the road. Uh, expectations are for, for a slight decline with an acceleration heading into the second half of the year. But I think even beyond the absolute numbers of what earnings are reported, What's going to be really, really important is the guidance that management gives. And especially for financials that are going to start reporting on Thursday, what's going to be critical to look at is what management teams are saying about the economy and about the consumer going forward. Um, are write-offs going to be less than expected? Is the consumer expected to be in good shape going forward to support the sort of reopening trade that a lot of the companies in, in the U.S. markets have been moving on. So I think if guidance comes in stronger than expected, I think that's going to be very supportive for the markets going forward and especially supportive for companies that are sensitive to this reopening theme. If there's some weakness involved, I think that could be a little bit of a catalyst to cause a setback which, quite frankly, I think is where we're overdue for right now to have some sort of consolidation uh, so we can build a nice base on which we can build going into the next part of the year. Yeah, that's fascinating because I, I think, as you point out in your notes here, we look pretty rich with the S&P sitting around uh, 27 times, somewhere near its 2020 high. Um, so there's an awful lot of um, hope built into those multiples at this stage. If you think we're going to have a pullback here, when does that happen? How much does the market come off? And then what do you do with that pullback in terms of building back positions? I do think we're likely to see some sort of pullback during the first quarter because there is so much optimism that's built into the market right now and there's a lot of fast money that has come into the market chasing some of these different types of trades and as you know we serve a number of different clients from global pension funds all the way to, to financial advisors here in the u.s and the one consistent message that that we've been telling them is to let the markets come to you especially when we have moved so significantly i mean small caps had just posted the best quarter in history in the fourth quarter and are up significantly in the first week or so of this year. Uh, I certainly think small caps are a favorable place to be in this year, especially if we start to see better economic growth, um, increasing interest rates here in the U.S. But some sort of pullback, I think, is definitely necessary to reset our expectations so that we can continue to build. Because quite frankly, the longer we go without some sort of pullback or even a consolidation through time where we start to move sideways, the more we set ourselves up for a sharper or more painful pullback that can happen very, very quickly. So it's perfectly healthy within the context I mean, of a bull up. market to have a 5 or 10% pullback. Yeah, Matt, I hear you. We're up 120% off our record low on those small caps you just mentioned, the Russell 2K. But, but the advocates of the further big rally from here, regardless of your pullback scenario, which, which I have a lot of sympathy for, they are saying, yeah, yeah, but last time we were trading at these kind of valuations, we had 3% treasury yields or we had 4% uh, treasury or whatever it was on those high yields. Now we have to look at these valuations in the, 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 the prism of, of treasury yields, which we're all getting excited about, 1.14 as well. So in terms of the relative valuation story, do you have any sympathy for those people? I do. And I think it's a great point that you bring up because valuation matters until it doesn't. And it's really, really hard to say when valuation's not going to matter anymore. I mean, we, we've almost doubled on the 10 year from the lows that we had back in March and April. We're at 112 or so this morning, and rates are definitely moving higher. But think back to where we were just at the start of 20, uh, 2020 rates were 1.8 or so. We still have a really long way to go, even before we're back to where we were at the start of next year. So even though 
rates have started to move higher. The environment that we're in, even if we push 140, 150 on the 10 year, these levels are still extremely supportive uh, of more rich valuations, especially when you look at that trade off between fixed income to equity. So it certainly can support valuations. And at the end of the day, a lot of these companies, small cap companies in particular, are posting very, very accelerated top line growth. And in an environment where investors are starved for growth, there's a reason for them to be rewarded. And I think that can continue as you go into the back half of next year, especially if GDP growth starts to materialize in the way that investors are expecting it to.